Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about pattern drafting and more specifically I'm going to show you how to draft a bodice sloper. Now a sloper is like the most basic pattern that you would start with. You'd start with that pattern and then you'd manipulate it until it's changed into something uh, that would make the design you have in mind. Um, and it's fitted to your body. Now a lot of people I see they start their, their patterns by tracing a t-shirt. That's great if what you want to make is a t-shirt um, or something with a stretchy jersey material, but for most things they're a bit more fitted and a, a, a sloper, it takes into account the slopes of your body, um, whereas the t-shirt pattern cannot and does not because um, it doesn't have to. Um, so uh, I'm basically going to show you how to do that today. Now uh, what I've got here, this is um, one inch graph paper. Now a lot of people have asked me what this is, where I get it, it's just one inch graph paper, it's like a big pad of it, um, like the kind of thing that a math teacher would have. Um, I bought it at Staples, it was like 11 bucks, um, it's like perfect for pattern drafting, it's like so genius that I figured this out, and I don't mean to toot my own horn there, but like I see people use newspaper and brown paper and um, dot paper, this, it's so cheap and it's Perfect. So go out and get some one inch um, graph paper. Uh, I've also got here some quarter inch graph paper because I'm not going to be showing you on this just because it, it's too big to fit into the picture, whatever. Um, so I've got quarter inch graph paper. So everything I'm doing right now will be quarter scale. If you want this to be for like a real person, you just blow it up and put it on the one inch graph paper. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, the first thing you need to do is take your measurements. Now, there are right ways and wrong ways to take measurements. I'm going to leave that up to you to make sure you're doing it right. Um, however, I would suggest get some rubber bands or elastic and then just uh, fit it around your waist and then you'll have that good reference point to start from. So anyway, let me zoom in and we're going to get going. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is uh, sketch in a line to represent your center front. Okay, this line doesn't have to be anything special, it's just a straight line, or a vertical straight line. Okay, next you need to draw in a horizontal line, so a line perpendicular to the um, center front line. And this line is going to represent your waistline. And you're going to take a bunch of measurements from this. This is why I recommend that when you're doing your measurements, put like an elastic around your waist so that it stays steady and you get consistent measurements. Okay, so these are your two starting lines for reference. You've got your center front and your waistline. Next thing you need to do is measure from your waist to your collarbone and mark that off. Now on me, what that is, 12 inches. Okay, so that's my collarbone. Uh, you can mark it off or you can just sketch in a little line here, but you don't really need this line later. I just, I'm gonna make it easier to see. Okay, so this is my collarbone. Next, you need to do a line to your shoulder. Now, unfortunately, because your neck's in the way, it's difficult to know exactly where your shoulder is. However, it's pretty standard on pretty much everyone. Just add four inches. So one, two, three, four. This is where your shoulder is. Now, when I first started making slopers, I always used that four inches and I never thought it was enough. But you have to remember that this pattern does not take into account um, uh, seam allowances at all, so you have to add those. And add them after you're done drafting it though. So, four inches, four inches is standard on everyone. Okay, so your center front, your waist, this is your collarbone, this is your shoulder. Next, you need to measure the width of your neck. Now that seems kind of like a weird measurement to take, and it is. Uh, the best way I've found to take this measurement is to dangle a chain around your neck and then measure the distance between your cha the chains. So the measurement you're taking is the width of your neck, not the circumference, the width of your neck. So the best way is to, to use a chain dangling around your neck to measure that. Okay, on me that measurement is about four inches. So this is center front, so everything's divided by two at this point. So uh, four inches on me would be two inches when marked up here. Okay, so right now I've got my collarbone. I've got my width of my neck. You just need to sketch in a curve here. 
doesn't really matter, you know, how big, how deep, just a rough curve in here. And this is your neck hole. Okay, next thing you'd need to do is um, sketch in your shoulder. Uh, now, so you need to measure from the base of your neck to the top of your shoulder. And on me, that is five and a half inches. So one, two, three, four, five and a half. So I'm going to come in five because I'm going to angle it down. Okay, so this is going to be where my shoulder is. However, your shoulder curves down a bit. It doesn't really go straight here. Um, if you are doing a pattern with like shoulder pads, you might want to leave it like this. But for your average pattern, for your basic sloper to start with, you should take into account that there's a curve there or it slopes down. Um, now, I've heard once that there is a standard angle to use. Same thing as using the four inches on every one. There's a angle here that works for everyone. I don't know what that is, so what I do is I just basically sketch in a line that at an angle that I think matches the way that my body naturally stands. So something like that looks right. Again, this isn't a perfect sloper, it's a basic sloper and you can fit it a bit on yourself afterwards. This is just to get the measurements down. So yeah, just kind of eyeball what you think your shoulder angle is and uh, go with that. Okay, it's kind of starting to look like something. Uh, next, you need to measure the height of your bust. So this is again where putting elastic around your waist comes in handy. So measure from that to the height of your bust. Um, uh, I'd recommend also putting an elastic around your bust and then just measuring to there. Okay, on me I'm gonna say that's seven inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's probably a bit high though. And I'm going to draw in a line here to be my bust line. Okay, so waist, bust, collarbone, shoulder, center front. You got it? Okay, so this is my bust. And uh, you want to measure then around your bust, like how the width of your bust, yeah. So, and then divide it by four. Because again, this is center front. So it's divided by two, but then there's a front and a back to your bust measurement. So on me, that is 10, so approximately here. This is my bust. Okay. Next, you can measure off your waist. One, two. So it's the same deal as before. You measure your waist, then you divide by four because you're... Um, yeah, it's center front, so it's two halves, and then there's a front and a back, so divide by four. And then you can just draw a line to join these. Okay. Next thing you want to do is measure your chest height. So your chest would be like to your armpit just above your bust. And the way that I like to do that is I have an elastic at my waist, an elastic at my bust, uh, and an elastic above it. And then I measure... Um, uh, in my armpit, like not over my bust because that's going to skew the measurement. So just like in your armpit measure from, from your waist to your armpit basically. So on me, that is this high. Okay, and you just stretch in a straight line there. Okay, now this is your armpit, this is your shoulder you need to make an armhole curve. So you just kind of draw a curve in. Now make the curve a bit deeper than you think it would. Like I know on a lot of t-shirts, the curve is more like this. That's not going to fit very well. The deeper the curve in general, it'll be more comfortable. Now obviously don't draw a curve like this, but you know, just kind of eyeball one like that. Okay, this is your basic pattern. Works front and back. Um, now this takes into account the size of your body, but not really the curves of your body. Now you can use this front and back. I've used this pattern straight up to make jackets and stuff. Things that generally the fit doesn't matter. Um, but uh, because this is a sloper, you want to have all your you know basic stuff in. You're going to need to do some darts. Um, so uh, instead of bringing your measurement in here. Instead, you can do this straight, and then this difference here, 
you can just kind of shift this over to be a, a dart. Now, to be your front dart, you'll need to measure from the apex of your bust to the apex of your bust. Apex of your bust is, an, is the highest point of your bust, which um, it's kind of a nice way of saying your nipple, nipples. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's one, two, three. That's approximately here on me. And then I've got three inches difference between my waist and my bust. So I'm just going to shift those three inches over here. And then, again, sketch in a curve. Okay, so then this would be straight here and you'd ignore this line. And this would be your front pattern. Uh, now, what if you want not just a front dart, what if you want a side dart? Okay, so if you want to move the dart, you can manipulate this. Um, and to do that, you need to start by cutting it out. Okay, so this is now your basic pattern, and you can manipulate this dart by swiveling it around. So, for example, if you want a, instead of a front dart, you want a side dart, you just cut along the bust line and then rotate this and then you tape it shut and then this would be your pattern. Now most people um, want kind of like half and half, you know, it kind of spreads it out. So you could go like that and then tape it up. Another thing you can do is you can do a shoulder dart. So you just rotate it like this and then that would be your pattern. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this basic um, sloper tutorial. Um, it is really, really easy. Now, what I have from this, it's, it's basic. It takes my measurements into account. It takes a little bit of my um, curves into account. But what I do is I make this in fabric, and then I'll fit it to myself. So I'll put it on. I'll make it. I'll put it on. And then you start just pinching pieces of fabric where there should be darts um, and, and pinning there and then sewing it up there. And then you take the pattern apart and then, you know, trace the lines, copy it out. So basically a sloper, it's the most basic um, pattern that you always start with. It's perfectly fitted to your body. However, in this case, it's a pretty good fit to your body. And I will use this pattern just straight up for a lot of things. Um, so yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, remember to check out my website, www.evangestyle.com. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.